All right, so let's see how much you understand about complex and imaginary numbers, because that's what we're talking about right here. So what we want to do is figure out what i to the 30th power is, and i is an imaginary number. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with complex and imaginary numbers, let's take a look at a simple example. So let's suppose you wanted to uh, find the square root of negative 16. Well, the answer is not negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16, not a negative 16. So how do we answer a question like this in math? Well, we need complex and imaginary numbers. Okay, so without using a calculator, let's see if we can figure out what i to the 30th power is equal to. Now, we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is negative i, B is negative 1, C is 0, D is a positive 1, and E is a positive i. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain uh, what, imaginary, uh, what an imaginary number is and, of course, how to solve this problem without a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. Uh, the correct answer here is B, which is negative 1. All right, now, if you got this right, we well, definitely get a happy face in A+. You'll be like, oh, Mr. U2 Math Man, I don't even know this stuff. What's going on? Well, it's certainly possible that you have not yet studied imaginary numbers. But uh, if you have not, well, this might be a nice little introduction into this concept. Uh, so stick around, and let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so i to the 30th power. Let's just figure out, first of all, or define what imag an imaginary uh, number or component is. Because technically an imaginary number, for those of you that are studying complex numbers, is a plus bi. This is the real number part, and this is the imaginary number part. So I'm not going to get into all that right now. Uh, but what we want to do is just define, for those of uh, you who have not seen this, what i is equal to. Okay, i is equal to the, uh, the square root of negative 16. Now let me just quickly go back to this problem. Remember the square root of negative 16? Uh, I'm sorry, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. I think I said negative 16. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So let's go back to this problem here, the square root of negative 16. Check out uh, how cool this is to have this imaginary number. I can rewrite this problem as the square root of 16 times negative 1. Okay, hopefully you know the rules of the square root and uh, the square roots. And I can now pull these um, factors apart. So I have the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. And by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 16, I can write that as positive negative 4 or just 4. So this would be 4i or plus or minus 4i. There is the answer. Okay, so this is the imaginary number answer to this problem. Okay, so this is why we need to know this stuff. Because if you're, you know, maybe at the algebra 1 level or maybe you're not taking math at all and you want to have a little more context of what we're doing, this is, you know, hopefully a nice little illustration of what's kind of going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, this i. So i, by definition, is the square root of negative 1. So what would be i squared? Okay, we're trying to find some sort of power of i. So i squared would just be this squared, okay? Uh, the square root of negative 1 squared is just negative 1, right? The square root of negative 1. Anytime you square something with the square root, uh, the, basically the square root falls away, and we have negative 1. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. Now let's move on to, so we had talked about i squared, and, uh, so we have i, i squared. What's i cubed? Well, i cubed, we can write that as i squared times i to the first, right? When we're dealing with powers, if I have x squared times x to the first, when we're multiplying powers with the same basis, we simply add the exponents, this would be uh, x cubed, okay? I could do the same thing with i, i squared times i to the first. Uh, if I add the exponents, it's the same thing as i cubed. So what is i squared equal to? Well, we already figured that out. That's negative 1, okay? And what's i? Well, i to the first, what's just i, or the square root of negative 1? So i cubed is the same thing as negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, or negative 1 times this right here is just i. So i cubed is the same thing as negative i, okay? Let's take a look at i to the fourth. Well, i to the fourth, I can express as i squared times i squared, because again, I can just add the exponents. I'm multiplying 
two powers with the same bases. I squared again is negative one. So this would be negative one times negative one, which is one. Okay, so you can see here that, you know, for each iteration, each power of I kind of have to manipulate it, but I'm, you know, I'm looking for patterns here. So let's go ahead and look for a pattern using some properties of exponents. And all of you out there, by the way, taking algebra or even pre-algebra should uh, know this rule. And let me just kind of review it right now. If I have X to the 10th power. Now, before we continue on, I have a quick question for you. Are you enjoying this content? Well, if you are, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. I will definitely uh, appreciate that. Also, if you need additional help in math, check out my math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I'm going to give you uh, some specific recommendations at the end of this video. All right, so let's get back to the problem. I could write this if I wanted to in a different way. I could say x squared to the what? What would this outside exponent be? Well, it could be 5, right? Because 5 times 2 is 10. So this is going to be the key. Knowing this property, taking a power to a power, is uh, going to be the key to making this problem very easy. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to do that right now. Okay, so here it is. So we have i to the 30th power. So what we want to do is find a power of i that we already know, an easy power. So we know what, the, uh, what i to the first is. We know what i to the second is. We know i to the uh, cubed. We know i to the fourth. So let's just go ahead and put this as i squared. So I could say I could think of i to the 30th as i squared to the 15th power, right? Because 15 times 2 is 30. So writing it this way has real advantages for me because I know i squared is equal to negative 1. Right, so let's go back up here to our little chart. We already figured out that i squared is equal to negative one. So now this problem becomes negative one to the 15th power, all right? Now, let's go ahead and start looking at powers of negative one. So here is negative one squared, which would be what? Negative one times negative one, positive one. And uh, this two is an even number, okay? What about negative one? Uh, to the third power. Well, that would be negative one times negative one times negative one. This is positive, that's negative, so it's going to be negative one. So you can kind of continue this pattern on until you're satisfied. But here's the deal. When you have an even power, uh, negative one to an even power, the answer is positive one. When the, uh, the exponent is odd, okay, and you're taking a power of negative one, the answer is negative one. So just looking at this, we have 15. Uh, that's odd. So it's going to be negative one. And of course, you could write out a bunch of uh, negative ones to kind of, you know, satisfy that this is in fact correct if you are in doubt. But you want to look for patterns. OK, this is how you make, you know, calculations much easier. Right. And you need to be able to work with, you know, these kind of shortcuts when you are manipulating, you know, expressions like this. So, you know, again, uh, this is, you know, like pre-calculus, algebra two level mathematics. But, you know, you can't do this problem unless you really learn this stuff, you know, like in pre-algebra and algebra one, these uh, basic uh, properties of uh, rules of powers and exponents. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.